Right, let's give it a go and let's see if the noise pollution beyond the hedge will cut me some slack. Welcome to Orchid Chores Diary. I have been mummifying sheets. I have been wrapping them up, not because it's Halloween <laughs> or almost Halloween, <laughs> but because I'm softening them up so that I can peel them off the pseudobulbs with as little damage as possible. And I have soaked every little microfiber string in my insecticidal soap. So if there are any kind of eggs, something lurking underneath the sheath that I cannot see, I'm hoping by doing it this way, I can sort of, you know, kill many insects in one go. But what I have done previously is soak the base because any sheath that I do address, I always start at the bottom. I have some footage of that from my Iricolor, which is very painstaking because I saw scale down there. And yes, even if the sheath above is still green, I do go for the base, especially if I see signs of scale trying to colonize a suitable. So that's just not gonna happen. And I always start from the bottom up because that is how the sheath and the growth starts to grow. The outside layer is at the bottom. And this gives me the opportunity to be a little bit more diligent about what I'm seeing at the base, especially when it comes to any kind of threat of pests. And also, if that sheath down there is already brown, at least the structure at the base is already matured. And in my very dry climate, my sheaths normally harden pretty hard. And well, I would like to make sure that any new roots that want to grow without me knowing it, and they can just come out, you know, make life easy for them. The sheath is gone. They know where to go down and not become aerial roots that I have difficulty maintaining in their growth. And besides, starting at the base, you don't accidentally rip off a new growth because you have to be super careful anyway because you're dealing with one layer after the other. So the risk of just pulling off a new growth, an eye, something that is developing underneath there is so minimal because the force of going from top to bottom doesn't pose the same dynamic as taking off layer by layer at the base. And that is what I've been doing for the past, oh gosh, weeks. Bit by bit, as things started to dry out, I was wrapping my pseudobulbs, removing sheaths. And of course, it's not like a one day thing because not everybody dries off at the same time. <laughs> So it's been a bit of a fiddle. When I had time, when I saw something progressing, I took after it. Usually when the sheaths are dry and I've already cleared the base, as in the case of my Sunya Green here, who is in bud, not the mailman, this is the regular one. You see, I already, earlier in the season, cleared off the base right here of the 2022 growth. The roots had no issues going down and I've wrapped the sheath at the top also with some of that insecticidal soap on the microfiber. Now, because the base is clear, I run no risk by just peeling everything off from top to bottom. And it takes forever for the liquid to soak into the dried sheaths. Absolutely forever. Some hours, which, you know, I don't have hours and I have to be careful about, you know, the time of day that I do this because if it's too sunny, I will burn my leaves, meaning I could put up my umbrella, but then what's going to happen when the wind blows? So yeah, this, this process starts huh, early September actually. And I keep an eye on it throughout the season, of course, especially around the base because those roots need to go in. Sorry about my clumsy hand always getting in the way there. I'm trying to keep my mic off the transmitter as well as trying to keep everything in focus. But I think I've got plenty of footage so that this doesn't look like, you know, the amateur that I am <laughs> dealing with, with trying to show you what I do. And then I take a rag. This little membrane here, I never really bother about. Eventually, it'll peel off, flake off. I don't really worry about it, but then I take a rag and give it a once over, also soaked in insecticidal soap. Now, when you get to the membrane like this, if you were just to pull it down, it would rip. So what I do is try to 
pull it down and around like in a circle and usually it should unwrap all in one go in a long strand but you know for demonstration purposes of course one is jinxed but anyway if that were to bother anybody normally i just leave it anyway sonia green is fine there is something i wanted to talk about and to be honest with you right now i don't oh yes <laughs> yes let me tell you here we have golden seller and golden seller has buds <laughs> yeah i wanted to say that i used to do this before garlic alcohol entered my life and then I stopped using insecticidal soap, seeing as garlic alcohol was super efficient and I didn't need it anymore. Well, turns out that this year I had mites and some thrips that uh, seemed to be a little bit more stubborn than I would have liked, especially the mites, because I've never had mites before in my life. They were a different kind of mite. I think I would have recognized spider mite and I would have been able to react sooner, but this was not a kind of mite that I could identify because nothing got orange on my hands. Anywho, insecticidal soap was back because despite garlic alcohol having been my lifesaver, pest saver, orchid saver since 2020, since 2021, sorry, I didn't have this stuff and I didn't wrap my sheaths. And you may see that some growths still have sheaths from last year, but that doesn't matter. It didn't bother me but now as they are coming in i'm a little bit paranoid about the mites situation what i also do is cut instead of rip just give myself a little bit more you know of a targeted removal without trying to rip into anything causing damage accidentally and then being cross with myself so yeah i've been sort of peeling off and cleaning pseudobulbs so that nothing or let's say so that I have somewhat peace of mind when I do bring these orchids in. Nothing is guaranteed ever, but this is how I do it. Very therapeutic. Normally when I'm not filming like I am today, I actually listen to podcasts. I like my true crime I'm following a few cases and I sit and then just, you know, peel away at my orchids. See what I'm doing here, this one, as I go down, I circle down instead of pulling straight down and it pretty much removes the membrane in one go. So I'm grateful to my golden seller for showing that it can be done. And of course it tangles itself up all around the base of the pseudobulb, but you know, at least I got it off. Now, when it comes to, oh boys, hello, when it comes to doing the removal of the sheaths, the pseudobulbs are extremely vulnerable. Oh, but they look so beautiful. They are very vulnerable. And uh, yeah, careful with your sun influence. You see this? This flaky membrane. It comes off relatively easy if the sheath has been pre-soaked. And then you just peel it going down, down, down. So careful with the sun influence after you have removed your sheaths if that is what you do now when it comes to super dry sheaths like here this is my golf green hair pig this sheath is super dry but you can see previously hopefully there the base is already clean so we are good to go so you see now it's not a problem to go straight down i run absolutely no risk of pulling any viable eye off there is no damage so I didn't need to soak this one but what I'm going to do it's not going to be exempt from an insecticidal soap wipe down the rag always goes back into the bucket in between orchids whether it spreads disease or not I don't know but it certainly isn't going to spread any pests <laughs> ah you see what's going on with the growth of this year right there let's see if i can peel that off together with you on camera and let's see if i can talk while i do it because i don't know how people feel about dead air on a video let me know in the comments i'm always wary of dead air so these are the outer layers now you know because my winter is coming there's going to be more humidity in the air i could very well leave this alone 
but seeing as it's a beautiful late afternoon in the fall in sunny Spain, why not? Why not fiddle a little bit and see if we can't get it off? A little bit of water helps the cause. And let's see. You know, once you start, it's almost like you can't stop. So I always have my tweezers with me. Also my paintbrush and my alcohol in case I do see something that I'm like, yeah, no, you're not staying. Do we want to risk it? Do we want to risk going in there or do we wait a day because Another thing that happens is, once you peel a little bit off, if you can't get it all off in one go, the next day, that part will have dried off, and then you can easily peel it off without forcing it off. So you see, it's a whole process. It's not like a one-day operation. On a day like this with you guys, while I'm filming, I suppose I can get quite a bit done. But having started this in September, whew, I've been at it now six weeks but it's fun, not complaining. The microfibers also dry out in between. I know, shocking, hey? Fall and the microfibers dry out. So while they're on the table, I do actually go around and just miss the microfibers again. So let's unwrap this, see what we've got. You see how dry that still is. It's been like wrapped for over an hour. And yes, I'm working with the ones that I know I have the base already cleared because the other ones, I know that their sheaths are really, really tough. They take a lot longer to deal with. And King is loving all these things that are falling on the floor. <laughs> Ooh, look, that's my territory. I get to chew that. Ooh, can you see this? <laughs> oh, shoe glory, happy holiday busting some moves in that sheath so let's not squish them by having a very dry sheath around it let's give those space they're gonna need it they're going to need it there we go see how easy that is maybe I'm repeating myself but if you were here on the patio with me that is what I would be doing, saying, oh, look, this was an easy one. Oh, look, <laughs> start at the base, free the base. And the rest is just like easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And that membrane can stay for the time being. Oh, look, it doesn't want to. Ah, oh. happy holiday is giving me all the vibes of being a very good example, student, making me look good with my little instructions here. <laughs> oh, you get some orchids that are just like, mm, nope, <laughs> in a minute you put the camera on. Nope, not having it. <laughs> ah, this one didn't do so badly. Oh, that's coming off. There you go. You can see the membrane from yesterday. Year. I never bothered to do what I'm doing now. Well, it didn't seem to be that easy last time. And then off into the shade you go because that pseudobulb also still needs to harden off. <gasps> oh, so beautiful. Oh, and it feels so good. Anyway, <laughs> don't want to leave any impressions here that I'm kind of like a pseudobulb kink or something. <laughs> so, y'all down there. Not just the land down under, but in the southern hemisphere. How are you doing? You enjoying your spring? You better be. And then add some of that in for me as well. So here's my Siamese doll kiwi. Clearly I have not even gotten to the fern part of it yet. We'll fix that right now. So tempted to cut into one of those fern root balls, but I'm going to leave it. Let's 
see what you've got to offer. Very underwhelmed by the performance of my Siamese doll kiwi. Very underwhelmed. I think it was actually due for another repot this year and I didn't get around to it. It did bloom, had two blooms on it, but no new growths. Mm. We'll have to see what happens in 2023, how I deal with this orchid. Let's get the base off. Some bases I wet in advance before doing anything, just to get them nice and soft before I get at them. I only had one new growth from this orchid. I have two leads on it. Yeah, very underwhelming. And now we can go from the top down. But what do you expect from a bifoliate, huh? <laughs> so in this instance, this is Mr. Mailman. Beautiful roots. So happy to see that. Buds blasted again this year for the fourth time. The lower part had already been stripped. No root issues. Everything's going in the pot as planned. And the top of the sheath here is still somewhat wet and damp. I'm monitoring it because if it is damp, it can also be, a, you know, a rot attractor but it's been so dry recently that it's okay but the base this sheath right here i want it off so it shouldn't be too big a deal so that when the other one is ready to come off i can do exactly the same thing but i'm a little bit loath to go at it right now because i don't want the pseudobulb to crack if i take a sheath off prematurely so at this point, I'm monitoring its progress. Because if I take that off prematurely, this part right here, the pseudobulb is still maturing in there. And then the sheath is actually there to keep it nice and tight, like a cage. Take that off, lots of water, fertilizer, etc., growth spurt with the roots. Then the pseudobulb has nothing to actually harden off on and get seasoned, so to speak. The sheath is there to protect it, to season a pseudobulb so that it doesn't crack. That's why I'm loath to take this off just now, but you can see it looks a little bit wet here. So we'll just be watching that. Cattleya Dawiana is giving me, ooh, soon blooms vibe, as in 2023. What a performer it has been. Except Dum Dum here burnt the leaf on the single day, the single solitary day where we had what I could consider almost a hot day. In Fahrenheit, it sounds hotter than it actually was because, you know, it was above the hundreds. And on that one day, I burnt the leaf harshly. But anyway, she is fantastic. That root growth is awesome. Just love it. So we'll just remove anything from the base. I don't rip down when I'm working at the base. I pull up. I'm working with the direction of the sheath as opposed to down. This way I don't ruin any new roots and definitely not the next eye. <laughs> I hope that was at least in focus because now I have no issues going top down. Everything that needs to be protected down there is protected. But you see, if you don't do that and you pull, 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 everything will come off like a domino effect. And the bottom one's always being tougher than anything at the top. Ooh, damage, damage, danger, danger. So I hope that this is helpful, that somebody sees that, oh my goodness, I never looked at it from that perspective before and can apply it successfully in their collection. And if you have had a light bulb moment because of that, how about giving this video a thumbs up? That would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. All the support is so appreciated. Feel as though I'm begging, and I'm gonna admit that I am begging, begging for support, not asking for freebies. I will do the work. I just need the support. So hopefully in 2023, my near blooming size Cattleya Dawiana, as she was back then, will be blooming size. Back then being in 2019. These are the toughest sheaths that I have. This is 
Binosa Wabash Valley. You know what? Recently, while I was listening to a podcast on my true crime, there was obviously a horrendous crime, and they are looking in the Wabash River for any form of evidence. Well, when I heard them pronounce Wabash, I realized I have been saying it wrong all this time. I always used to say Wabash. Uh uh, Wabash. So I do apologize to anyone in that area. Julie's Orchids, I'm talking to you. Thank you so much for probably having a little bit of a giggle hearing me pronounce it wrong and being so gracious as not to call me out. I appreciate it. But from now on, this orchid, I shall be calling her Wabash Valley just to make sure I do it right. These sheaths are tough. I always wrap them first and then, you know, get to them pretty much last because they feel as though I haven't even, you know, wet them at all. But if I don't do that and don't wait so long, this would be impossible or it would come with a lot of damage. Let's get the tweezers. She is forming three buds. She was in my blooming alley all this time, so I hope we don't get bud blast. This orchid could have also produced another new growth this year. She's got two leads, but nope. Didn't want to know anything about that. It was a single growth, not even as big as what they should be. So that probably is another candidate to be repotted in 2023. Methinks that probably a repot in this year would have done her a world of good. And I didn't get around to it. But three buds, if they don't blast, that'll be great. They're so beautiful. You see the anthocyanin line right here? So this one's hardened off nicely to the light. Anything exposed from here on in needs to be a little bit more protected. It will burn very, very easily. So we'll leave that for now. We won't be so insistent. If you don't want to come off, Hakuna Matata, you can stay on. Let's see what we can do here. This growth feels super weak. It doesn't even feel attached. So I'm going to leave the bottom sheath on. I don't want to mess down there. The sheath, whatever is still attached, is holding on with the sheath to the rhizome. Maybe I'm just imagining things, but it doesn't feel right. So I'm going against the direction I would prefer to go. And we'll just pull you up again and stop. And we're going to put the support around again because the movings and shakings of the winter. Mm -mm. I don't want to be losing any growths just because I've snagged them. Little update on my Louise Fuchs who has produced a beautiful growth of 2022. Look at this. Very nice. I like it. There we go. That was a success as far as I'm concerned. So maybe Maybe we'll get some blooms in 2024, and I'm not misspeaking. She came to me as a seedling. But we're going in the right direction. So let's make sure that we don't rip the sheaths off. This is a stubborn one. Very stubborn but it has to come off at least to some degree because if they are that tough at the base, I want new roots to find it very, very easy. I got this one from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents two years ago, actually. So that's great that she's progressing. 2021, 2022. Jumped into lacquer and self-watering as if she never knew any different. I would say an easy one to grow except warm to hot grower. Now comes her challenging time. 
does not appreciate cold temperatures too much and there's a swelling underneath that sheath there sorry if my hand is blocking the view let's be very diligent there we go look at that at least i hope you can see it so i just took this off and i pulled with the growth not down if i had pulled down that eye would be history. The mumblings and musings of an orchid sheath peeler. Are you a peeler? Do you leave them alone? Do you enjoy this kind of work? Do you bother? Do you think it's necessary? I mean, I just told you my reasons why for me, I believe it's necessary. If you've got yours in the trees, you probably think, what's the fuss? Yeah. Pot culture is a little bit different than alfresco tree culture. Different challenges, but let me know. Clearly you can see I'm a peeler. <laughs> Do you want to stick around for Francis Fox? Look at that. I hope that we're going to have ourselves nice bright orange blooms, but if she blasts, then we won't have anything. So let me just rephrase that so she doesn't get any funny ideas. Any blooms this orchid produces, I'll be very, very grateful. She's late for me. She should have bloomed uh, around July. But having said that, she did bloom for me during the winter of 2021, 22. Very pale, almost apricot-like blooms. It wasn't pretty at all, but she bloomed. Amazing. So if she does bloom before the end of 2022, then she is going to have bloomed for the first time, two times in one year. <laughs> now that would be something. And see how long that was soaking as well. And they're still crispy. Oh gosh, you feel so good. Huh. <sighs> Let's wipe you down. There we go. I guess King got fed up. <laughs> I was dropping everything on the floor. Everything's blowing around on the patio. Oh, he started to be really excited, but yeah, no, he's like, nah, this is boring. But isn't it the same like with children, right? If you say no, 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 their interest just keeps increasing. You give them something that they normally shouldn't have, shouldn't do, and yeah, they get bored. That is reverse psychology for you, even with pups. <laughs> Look at this Brassavola Digbiana. Can you see them? Look at that. Oh, goodness me. Let's get in a bit closer. These growths, Digbiana is just insane. Look at that form. Anything with glaucus on it as well. Just, oh, so good, so good. And I find also relatively advanced these growths. Normally they start for me like in November, December, and then I struggle to make sure they get enough light so that they will bloom. This is further along than I have had <laughs> in several years. So, but you guys, I think that this video is going to be rather long. So if you stuck around and watched to the end, listening to my musings and mumblings while I was peeling sheaths, well, I really hope either it was fun for you to do and that in the end you didn't regret watching the whole thing, <laughs> that you maybe got a few little pointers that you can apply in your collection. And if not, if you were just here because, hey, you know, it popped up randomly in your recommendations. Well, thank you so much for watching. Either way, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a fabulous day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.